I'm super, super happy with how this one turned out. It's perhaps the most appropriate material for a football. There's a huge range of textures between the You've no doubt seen uh, this guy on the internet, John Paul's Balls, absolutely blowing up on TikTok right now. Instagram, the soccer world kind of loves him. Anyways, turns out that he's actually in the US. I thought he was in the UK. We reached out to him, he shot us an invite and said, come check it out. Jordan and I are hopping in a car. We're going 12 and a half hours from North Carolina to St. Louis where John is located. We're gonna check out the magic. He said that he has a special ball that he's working on. So stay tuned if you wanna see that ball as well and see this entire process. We're super pumped to show you this video. Let's go. arrived in St. Louis, picked up Jack Real Griffalo on YouTube, description below. He's gonna be doing a play test on this ball that we're gonna be seeing today, but this, uh, I think this is the spot. Hello, welcome to St. Louis. Hey, Come in. what's going on? John, before you go in, so I've seen this space a lot on TikTok, on IG Reels. It's kind of surreal. For us as footballers, it's kind of like it's a big moment. the Willy Wonka of I don't know, just being a soccer player, wild stuff. So let's go check it out. All right. This is the football factory. Oh my goodness. So it's not just, this isn't just a set, a stage prop. You, this is how you, this is how it is. This is how it is. Like I said, we're taking you behind the scenes of showing you kind of John Paul's creative process, how he brings these footballs to life. Pretty excited about it. First up, can you give us a bit of a tour of your space sure. and like what's going on? Sure, okay, well I guess I'll start here considering yeah. this is where I am. This is, uh, I actually don't know what this is called, you know. It's, it's a machine that presses these dies that I have to create the little cells for the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is usually where the process starts after the design process, the actual like ball creation process happens here. bladder. This is inside every single ball. For the first year or so of my ball making, I couldn't find a place to get them. So I was actually buying other balls <laughs> and then just like destroying them. Oh my word. Uh, I eventually found like a factory that would, would sell me like a batch of just the ball bladders. Mm -hmm. I'll okay. show you how they come. They're uh, it's a nice segue onto another part of the, the tour. There's five in each of these little packs. It basically just looks like that, just uh, deflated. Uh -huh. There's some uh, previous projects just kind of scattered around. This one's kind of interesting. This is, uh, this is one of the first globe ones I did. This one I think has 212 cells in here. This, this ball probably took me the longest I've ever, it's ever taken me to make any ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, 212 cells. This was before I had the press and dies. So I was manually cutting out each oh of these, uh, these shapes and like stamping the holes in. So this really took a long time. If you look closely, you can kind of tell that the cells were cut out by uh, by hand and not like a proper tool because they're a little bit like. Okay. Is this forming the world? It's supposed to. <laughs> I got some savage comments on the TikTok I posted about this ball. So almost just like. That's in I was like, this is, this is really cool. This is really cool. You should make one that looks like the world though. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh, I tried really hard. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> got off the hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is my current project. This is. Uh, Decommissioned fireman's hose pipe. This is my new toy, which I'm very proud of. Uh, it's a laser cutter, basically. Okay. So it can cut any SVG shape and also etch stuff into the things it cuts. So this was a ball I did recently where uh, it was for the 1966 World Cup. Uh -huh. And there was 32 games played in that tournament and there's 32 cells on that football. It's this football right here. So for each game, the position of where each goal was scored is, has been kind of manually plotted right. on the cell. So this was West Germany versus Uruguay. West Germany beat them 4 0. This was in the quarterfinal. So the, the point is. What's the red bit before? The final. So basically, England won. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to bring that back up. Come on. Uh, they wore uh, their white kit uh, in every game apart from the final. Okay. Which they wore their red kit. All so right. there's a little throwback to that. I like made the last cell for the final. 
the same color as their kit. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that like a hacky sack? <laughs> it's just a ball, but smaller. You can call it a hacky sack if you want. There's like no bladder in it though. Well, it's, it's too small. It's, it's just a memory okay. foam actually. It's kind of like stuffed in right. One attempt. <sighs> oh, it wasn't bad. Two attempts. <laughs> You can just keep saying one attempt. And then yeah, one attempt. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you show us like the first ball that you ever? Oh, this is it. Made it right at the start of uh, the pandemic, actually. Okay. Had all these leather tools. I was like, oh, I can make a ball. Obviously, it's pretty bad. I mean, you should you should get some close-ups on how bad it is. Quite okay. quite bad. I mean, it was your first ball. It was my first ball. And I, you know, I didn't look into how to do it. I was like, oh yeah, I think I could just sort of like. Just start sewing the cells together yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. And it was, yeah, kind of an embarrassing mess. But I thought, oh, you know, I think I could probably do that a bit better, you know? And like that has just been the headspace for the past few years. Yeah. And now, like, as you can see, you're just surrounded by balls. And um, you designed it to uh, stick to your uh, well, <laughs> light fixture, apparently. <laughs> you give me way too much credit. I designed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I sewed a magnet in the middle of it, okay. is, what, is, is what's going nice. on. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the first ball. Talk to us a little bit about the creative process. For me, it's absolutely fascinating to, it's like you're developing these footballs, right? But you're not just like making the same thing over and over. Every time, I, every couple days, I, you know, on TikTok or Instagram, bam, you have a new concept, new design. Where is that like coming from? <laughs> yeah, so there's a few different areas I've been kind of enjoying exploring. One is materials, so like new material, interesting materials, like the host pipe is a good example of that, like the different shoes, that kind of thing. That's one area that I've been enjoying exploring. Uh, themes in general have been kind of fun. Like I love the idea of like the ball itself, like being an encapsulated story, you know, like for example, the uh, like the Gerard ball. Yeah. You've seen that that I did. Mm -hmm. So it's made from boots he wore throughout his career. There's some it's captured the essence of Steven Gerrard by uh, some football stickers of, of him like shredded and put inside yeah, the ball. I saw that. So I love the idea of just like making it something that like it encapsulates a story, you know. So like maybe working through the obvious one is different players. So I'd love to just like start just like you know each month maybe there's like a new player and it's mm -hmm. like start from scratch every single time. It's like right, not mm -hmm. just like let's use the boots every single time. Like really like what's this player's story? Like what's their deal? Like what? How could how could I make them something that's, that they love? You know, like truly would be like oh, like a grail piece for them kind of thing. Yeah. And I think once you think about it through that lens, it becomes kind of easy. The other nice thing is now that I mean, there's there's, there's people who will just like leave great suggestions. They either like just DM me or like leave comments and stuff. That's been a pretty good source of, of, of inspiration. And also people just asking for balls. Like people, I, got, I made one from, for someone who's in Iraq, like an army soldier based in Iraq at the moment. That was yeah, kind of fun. There's crazy. a scientist who reached out who's uh, going on this big ship on this like six month journey around like Antarctica. Dang. So I'm going to make one that looks like the ship, you know, so people on the ship can like, you know, like have a kick about basically oh like words. when they're like touring. So the, the easiest part now I feel like is, is the inspiration. It's just, I have a growing list of stuff that I just want to kind of, I'm just itching to get to basically. Mm -hmm. So after you finalize the idea and you know this is the direction I want to go on my next ball, What's literally the first step? Like, do you jot it down? Do you? I guess the first step is I put it in the ball queue, which is this, essentially just a list that okay. I have of just balls that I'm gonna get around to soon. Once it's in the ball queue though, you know, it starts to like slowly work its way up to the top. Once it hits the top, I guess it kind of depends on what it is. Like if it's just like, like the host pipe ball, there's not really too much design that's involved in that outside of stamp out the cells of the host pipe and try and sew it together and see if it works, you know? Yeah. So I have this, this uh, very basic software um, that helps design the ball. Uh, depending on, the, like, again, it's not always going to be relevant depending on the construction, but for a lot of them, you kind of start with a base construction, like, lay out some ideas in this software so you can kind of like paint in each individual cell and just kind of get a sense for like, you know, how the ball's going to look once it's done, you kind of freely rotate it around, explore different ideas and stuff. Then the software spits out, okay, in this design, you have like 12 cells that are triangle and blue, like 16 cells that are triangle and like green or this particular shade of green or whatever the design kind of encapsulates. So it helps kind of give you a roadmap? Exactly. To work, okay. It tells you what you need to cut out with the, the, the press machine. Then it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. It's just 
you create the jigsaw pieces, which are the individual cells. Which is the stamping process. Yeah, that's that, that thing. Uh, make a little pile until you have everything and then get comfortable, sit down and start sewing, basically. Uh, that's basically the process though. How long would it take you to sew them like a normal, I guess? A 32 cell one. 32 cell ball, how long in general? I could probably do that in like start to finish, maybe eight hours. Is that just the stitching or that's the whole, everything, the whole ball? Everything. Yeah. But that would be just like no the real design goes into it. It's just like stand the cells out, sit down, start stitching. You could do that in a day probably. Yeah, like eight, eight solid hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The balls I like to do are the kind of really interesting ones though. The ones that they have story and aren't, aren't like not commercially viable. You know, there's things that just like that is silly. That you, you, know, like, you spend too much time on that for yeah. a ball kind of thing. So you land on a uh, design, like, like you said, you stamp out the material, then you stick it in to the old algorithm, code it out or whatever in a program. Exactly it spits that. out kind of the roadmap that you need to go. Like then you get to sew it all. For me, I would, that would drive me crazy to hand sew all that, which is wild. Talk us through some of that process. You get into the point where it's just like totally, you don't have to think about it. It's yeah. just like you're totally in the zone. You're totally just like going through it. Did you know how to sew, stitch? Do you have no. any sort of background before you learned it just for this? I learned it just for this. And in fact, I, I should have looked up some tutorials, <laughs> but I, I never did. And okay. I'm realizing there actually aren't many or any like proper ball making tutorials online. I mean, it's super unique. It seems like it, yeah. Um, and honestly, the first few balls I made, as you can see by that one I showed you, I was doing it all wrong. Like I wasn't saddle stitching. Like what is what is that? A saddle so, stitching. So saddle stitch means you use two needles at the same time, and you basically you sort of do this. Like a, I guess that would be a regular stitch. I don't even know. <laughs> like, uh, but it's like doing that twice. Okay. I don't know if this is technically even correct, but it's basically like a strong stitch. Yeah two needles. Yeah, so this is a good example. So this is saddle stitched. Okay. You can see how there's like quite defined cells here, like that's, mm -hmm. that's a pentagon, that's a hexagon. It's tighter. That isn't saddle stitched. You see how it's like kind of wavy? Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. So that's the kind of like outcome. So it takes twice as long, but I, I mean, it's like way better. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So how's the process work? You guys see you have this little contraption yeah. that holds, how does that work? I don't even know the correct name for that thing. I've been calling it I think it's maybe a pony. It looks like a pony. You yeah. kind of like get on it and ride it. Like looks like some, some sort of horse, some sort of animal. Uh, all it does, all it does though, that thing is just hold the little work piece. It's just like having like a third hand in okay. front of you, just like holding it like this. Um, but yeah, you put the two pieces in there, put it in the little third hand pony thing, uh, and then yeah, you just you just start going. About halfway through, you have to put the ball bladder in. So there's a process where you have to you know stamp out the hole, get some glue, like put it put it in there um, and that then it kind of becomes a bit more intense but there's a correlation between how long it takes to make a ball and how satisfying it is to pump it up you know because you, you've really been grinding for it you know so like those those glow balls for example they, they, they take a long time but they're also like when they actually come together and they actually like fill out that yeah the shape inflate. the first time it's like oh yeah it worked I'm happy <laughs> first time I think I ever stumbled across you was the Predator Ball, which mm. I think when I checked last is like around 10 million views on TikTok wow. or something mm. crazy like that. Talk to us about like how that came to, oh, there Predator it is. Ball, here it is, yeah, you can check it out. Would you look at that? Look at that. Talk to us about how this came to be, because this is an iconic boot and then it's it's has a new life, like it's living on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. boots, they're old and whatnot, now has a new life of its own. Can you talk to us a little bit how this kind of came about? It, it felt like just like the ultimate. This was, this came about from me exploring different materials. It's one of the things I've been kind of just flailing around, like seeing if, exploring, you know. And it felt like football boots were kind of the ultimate material it felt like to make a football from. You know, it's already. Yeah. Like it has the spirit of a thousand kicks already inside the leather before it's even like turned into the ball. Yeah. Um, so that was the impetus for it. I always, like, I think Predators were the coolest boot that I wanted as a kid. I was like, okay, yeah, that'll, make, that'll make a cool, cool, interesting ball. It's funny that you say this was the ball that, that you saw like, you know, 
the first like how you became aware of, of, of all the balls yeah uh yeah like, i've been posting like i've been doing the balls like i said for a few years now yeah. the beginning of the pandemic is when i started and i've been posting just process stuff to instagram this entire time and about two months ago i would say i had 50 followers on instagram like truly screaming into the void just like yeah. mom's really paying attention you know just your mom's it. like great work honey. yeah yeah even that she's like well it's all right you know? yeah. <laughs> um but yeah no one was really paying attention just doing it because it was i thought it was fun yeah kind of, kind of funny doing it for the love of the game um but yeah this one really really did uh kind of resonate with people and, and get seen by a lot of people which was very cool and interesting to experience This ball is obviously incredible, but it's kind of reserved, right? We're gonna be, what, what, yeah. what are we gonna be play testing with? A little bit hesitant about taking this one out to do uh, too much with, but I do have something. Understandably. I do have something close, which is ah. this. It's the exact same construction, 92 cells, 12 pentagons and 80 hexagons. This is my daily drive of this ball, actually. This is the ball I use all the time. Okay. Um, it should get us close. It's not gonna be like a like for like comparison. Obviously it doesn't have the, the grip or like, you know, that, that inverse kick off the boot that you're hoping for <laughs> but i am still curious to see what it how it flies through the air all right so this is the one really we'll be play testing to see what it's like yeah it's gonna be fascinating down in the description below check it out so you mentioned that uh you're working on a special project on our way here you said you were really like excited to show us i mentioned at yeah. the intro that you're going to show us can you show i, us I can give you now? i can give you a preview of it okay this is this is a little hint no yeah, I've actually, it's, all, it's already also finished. So here it is. Oh my goodness. It's made from eight Nike Air Force One shoes. Oh my goodness. There's, there's three of these, uh, I learned today they're called swooshes. I was calling them ticks and people were like mocking me for it. So apparently Americans English. call it a swoosh. The Nike yeah, swoosh. swoosh. So there's three of those. And they're kind of interesting because uh, basically like every time you make a cell, like you stamp one of these out, you lose a little bit of fabric. Yeah. So for each, tick it basically took two shoes <laughs> oh my word so there's three ticks on there oh uh, i feel like most people have a pair of air force ones bro oh that's bro. cool <laughs> did this take more or less time than normal or it took about a week yeah because um, i feel like the leather on especially like these like ogs are like thick yeah you know what i mean it's kind of a struggle with the parts but wow you've done a predator you done an Air Force One ball. Uh, what's the ultimate trajectory of? You know, are you just doing this for fun, or do you do you want to eventually have something to that you're working towards? I have been doing it for fun. Um, I had never planned on doing this any, anything more than fun, you know. But the past couple of months of maybe there is a path to doing this in a way that is viable. The tricky thing is that, like I mentioned, they're not commercially viable at all. I can't sell the balls, they're just too expensive. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I do plan to just keep focusing on like making these like one of one, like full on concepts, you know, that I just enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, I do plan on doing some tutorial content. I do plan on selling some, okay. of, the, some of the dyes. I'm working on a website. Um, and the website will basically just be a full library of every ball I have made or every ball i make we probably won't have the full 70 on there like some of the og terrible ones won't be on there but it will have essentially everything i'm not ashamed of okay. being, will be on there <laughs> um, you'll be able to click through and every ball will have a whole page which will almost be kind of like a, a facebook profile page of the ball um you know have like the making of it have like photos of the ball coming together um and then hopefully if the person i give it to is kind enough to share it in their Instagram story or take photos of it or whatever. I plan to update those pages like over the course of the bull's life, basically. So you can see it kind of like age and grow old, kind of oh, like right, gracefully. Yeah. So it's almost like an NFT. Uh, so You're tracking it in your website. Kind, kind of, yeah. Like each bull will have like a unique code. So it no will way. be like a one of one, like that's the bull, that's the Nike bull. You can go on the website and track its whole, its whole history from being created to wherever it is now. That's fascinating. So yeah. It's in this person's house. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when this goes live, this this bigger project you're working on, where where could people find that? That would be JohnPaulSports.com. Okay. John Paul, thank you so much for your time, for showing us the space. It's 
been surreal walking in, seeing the thing that we've been watch, looking at for a couple weeks now on the internet. When I walked in, I have to say, it felt like, more. this is like Casey Neistat version. Oh, cool, I'll soccer. take it, sweet. I love, love Casey, so yeah, that's the highest compliment I can give. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, thank you. Anyways guys, Jack is gonna be doing a play test like we mentioned before, this ball right here. So you can check out that video, it'll be right here. John Paul, you can check out his YouTube channel right here. And any other information for either of these guys or us is gonna be down in the description below. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, that is it. That's our video for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, your dreams don't work if you don't. See you guys.